Quick video today. I've already got all this stuff out. I think I can get this point across pretty quick. Let's talk about setting the gas flow rate for TIG welding. This goes for any welding that uses a shielding gas, but we'll be using TIG as our example. You might be thinking, I don't get it, old Tony. Setting the gas flow rate for TIG welding? I mean, don't you just look it up on a chart or in a book? To answer your question, yes. Yes, you do. Thanks for watching. Simple as that sounds, it can sometimes cause heartache. Some people run into problems due to gas settings. You may be having problems with your TIG welding you didn't even realize were caused by the gas flow. You might be running a funny setup that's not in the book. You might not even have the book. Here's the thing, the books aren't always right. It's not that they're not right. It's more like they can't cover every possible situation you might be welding in. That, and it's not always as straightforward as every cup having its own flow rate. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how to figure out that flow rate on your own. Before we get into that, let's take a step back because you're way too up in my personal space. TIG welding uses an inert gas to generate and maintain an arc and shield the molten metal from the atmosphere. Usually that gas is argon. I can't show that to you because, well, the argon I like to use is invisible. Makes it easier to see what I'm doing. When you push the button or stomp on the pedal, you get shielding gas out the business end. Argon is heavier than air, so it tends to sink downward, which is good if your weld is underneath you. If you're welding upside down or outside during a tornado, well, a standard gas flow setting might lead to problems. This is a one inch can't twist clamp, but this, this is a number eight cup. Now, I happen to be using a gas lens, but that's not important. Although flow rates for gas lenses will be different than regular collets. And I run this about 10 to 12, maybe 15 CFH. That's cubic feet of argon gas per hour coming out of that hole, which is in the neighborhood of five or six liters per minute. For now, let's just make pretend that that's all there is to it. Number eight cup, set it to a certain flow rate. Bigger cup, more flow. Smaller cup, less flow. So far so good? This is my flow meter. As you can see, I extract my argon directly from old cardboard. Cuts out the middleman. The regulator is wearing a collar for two reasons. First, the back wall of my garage is where I keep my black holes, and they make the meter readings hard to see. I started with some masking tape first, but that didn't help the camera any. Not that the cardboard looks that much better. Second, I really don't want it biting at its stitches. I'll press the button on the torch to start the machine and get the gas moving. According to the book, that's about the right setting for a number eight cup on a gas lens. Maybe depending on where on the ball you take that reading, it's never bothered me enough to actually sit down and figure out where this meter is reading. Now your flow meter might not look like this one, and that's fine. Or you might have a regulator instead of a flow meter, which you shouldn't, but can happen. By the time we're through here, hopefully you have enough insight to set your own flow rate. I ask you, please look past my welding kung fu and consider only the color, or the discoloration rather. And let's compare that to the inside corner joint from before. Now, one of these is marked 15, this one. This one is the one you saw on camera. My flow rate was set a little higher there, so to keep it apples to apples, I ran another inside corner with 10 CFH. These two welds are both run at the same flow rate. Again, 10 CFH and pretty much spot on for a number eight cup and gas lens combo. So why the big difference? Why is one bright and shiny and the other one so dull? To cut to the chase, for the same flow rate, the shiny one had better gas coverage. Being down in the valley like that, the argon didn't really have a lot of space to run off. Imagine it acting like water and sort of flooding the weld area. On the outside corner, the shielding gas can sort of roll off, spill down the sides. Doesn't spend as much quality time with the molten weld bead. In this case, I'd turn the gas flow up a little bit, perhaps two or three more CFH and try again. But let's not do that, because just one specific example might not stick with you for long. Instead, let's do the complete opposite. Let's turn our gas off completely. Oh yeah, you heard that right. No gas.
You're not gonna find a weld like that on Instagram. If your welds look like that, you're not getting any gas. If your welds look like that and you do have adequate flow, you likely have a hole in your gas line somewhere. If your welds look like that, you have adequate flow and you have no holes in your lines, we'll just stop this video right now. Now let's turn the gas up just a little bit. Say five CFH, a half or uh, maybe even a third of what this cup really wants. Give me a chance to just wire brush this and find another point for my tungsten. Never gonna dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Though it's easy to pretend, I know you're not a- Okay, so that's not actually as ugly as I was expecting, but as TIG welds go, I think that's pretty bad. About halfway through, it's really starting to show porosity, and the entire length of the bead is, I don't know, contaminated or carburized or whatever that black soot is. The tungsten is also purple or black, though it did just go through hell and back with that previous no gas weld. Let's go back to this piece and do the other half with 15 CFH. Eh, could be better than that. I'm gonna bump up the flow just a little bit more. Well, hopefully you can make out that that's a lot cleaner looking bead than that was for either of these two. Now this is a different material thickness. This is the back side of the weld we saw earlier marked as 15 CFH. I did bump the current up a little bit, but that really shouldn't influence this demonstration. I mean, if anything, it would have made this bead hotter, right? I'd almost wager this could use a little bit more flow, one or two CFH more. It's worlds better than this one, but it's probably still not as shiny as it could get. I did also have a little bit more tungsten stick out, so the cup could have been a little bit closer. Let's keep going. I'm gonna do the rest of this weld with my flow regulator set just as high as it'll go. Well, that didn't turn out exactly how I hoped it might. I was hoping to pick up some porosity like in the low gas situation. I mean, moral of the story, too much gas is just as bad as too little gas. I guess it's hard to show because it might be very situation sensitive, but too much gas can do two things. First, it wastes a heck of a lot of gas. Gas costs money. Now, if money is no object, and you like hearing your torch hiss like a banshee, the other downside is that that fast of a flow rate can suck atmosphere in along with the argon. Instead of covering and protecting your weld, the gas is sort of pressure washing the whole area, pulling in air and again, potentially contaminating your weld. Okay, I think that was more or less all I've got. The point was, if you're having trouble with your welds and it's related to the flow rate, you can't just trust the numbers in the charts or that might have come with the cup or stamped underneath your welder. I mean, if they're working for you, that's great. In that instance, I might even suggest trying to knock it back one or two or three CFH, see if you can save some gas. Oh, and if you don't have a flow meter, like maybe you have a regulator, or perhaps you don't trust your flow meter, you can get one of these little things. They call these pea shooters, I think. You just put this on the end of your torch, hold it vertically, of course, hit the button and take another reading. Though, to be honest, the measurements on this pea shooter has never matched up with that on my flow meter. So in a way, I guess I have no idea what my flow rates are. But you know, maybe it helps you catch a leak or a clogged cup or does more for you than it did for me. I just want you to know that they exist. You can also use these for your MIG guns, of course, too. All right, well, until next time, thanks for watching.